All right, I've been asked to say a couple of words about uh, Donald Trump, and I do so with a, a few reservations. But here's the question that I want to ask and answer. Uh, why is Donald Trump so popular? I'm going to situate the answer in the context of Nietzsche and Nietzsche's concept of the will to power. So why is Donald Trump so popular? Well, my claim is that he provides for his followers an experience which is vicarious of the will to power and power itself as well. So a couple of words on that. Jody Dean has written uh, an excellent piece in, in these times. Um, and what she suggests is that Donald Trump is popular because he circulates within the populace jouissance, right? Which is a French word for pleasure. It can be any type of pleasure, uh, has some sexual connotations. It's used in different ways by different folks, philosophers, feminists, uh, psychoanalysts. It's associated with Lacan, who takes it in a different direction. But we're, gen we're generally just thinking about jouissance in terms of pleasure. The idea is he entertains us. Donald Trump entertains us. She's got a pretty creative characterization as well of Donald Trump as a gigantic id, right? So if you recall in the Freudian framework we have the id, which is this sort of instinctive, impulsive component, and then we have the superego, sort of society's mores, keeps the id in check, and then you have the ego, right, which mediates between the superego and the id. And Jody Dean refers to Donald Trump as a giant id, so he just goes along saying whatever he wants, there's no control whatsoever, there are no consequences, and he gives voice to um, racist and sexist sentiment, which she claims uh, uh, sort of latent in the population. In any case, jouissance, and then uh, Trump as a gigantic id. But now that we're talking about the id, we're talking about Freud. And when we talk about Freud, we really should go back to Nietzsche. Because, of course, Freud uh, admired Nietzsche quite a bit and was very indebted to Nietzsche as well. Um, and said, for instance, you know, like the results of psychoanalysis, the results accord really well with a lot of Nietzsche's ideas. So Jody Dean says jouissance and the id. And I say will to power. We should take it one step further back, this experience, which is vicarious, of the will to power via Trump. So he'll say stuff like, for instance, um, you know, I'll build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. So not only will I persecute migrants, but I'll make Mexico pay for the wall. Um, stuff like, I beat China all the time. Who says stuff like that? I beat China all the time. Like, I beat you in baseball all the time. That's kind of, I beat you in baseball all the time. Uh, Never mind one of the most impressive and ancient human civilizations of all time, China. I beat China all the time. So this um, vicarious experience of the will to power. Now the question arises, um, what actually is the will to power? The will itself is a greatly misunderstood concept within Nietzsche, who himself is a greatly misunderstood uh, philosopher. And in terms of the will, he'll say stuff like, the will alone does not suffice for action. Um, it relates to his concept of I, which is a synthetic thing that both commands and obeys at the same time, and that's the pleasure you get from uh, exercise of the will. But we can think about the will to power in about four different ways. I disagree with Nietzsche scholars who want to sublimate the concept entirely and ignore its sort of uh, cruder dimensions, we might say. So he does formulate it in a lot of different ways. I'll talk about four levels to begin sort of highest level, we can think of it as the will to self-overcoming, to self-transcending, the uh, will that is manifested by the Ubermensch, the Overman, who revalues all values. Um, it's an artistic and spiritual impulse. It's philosophy itself. This tyrannical impulse, he says, is philosophy. And that's the highest level. And I think um, in terms of normative suggestions, that's what Nietzsche would have us pursue. But I think it's undeniable that the will to power uh, appears in other ways, in much cruder ways as well. And so I would disagree with folks like Walter Kaufman, the great interpreter and translator of Nietzsche, would disagree that it's a, sort of a pure concept, and he might not say that it is either. Um, in any case, uh, a second level, you could think about it as sort of um, a force that animates all life, or as he says in Beyond Good and Evil, a preform of life. He says, life itself is will to power. Um, and there are a few things I'd like to read, but I won't do that right now. 
Um, life itself is will to power. Another level. And now we're sort of descending, right? Here's the genealogy of need. We're descending. Uh, we would call it maybe uh, a cause in a description of biological behavior. For another word, we might say like life, right, which is will to power, uh, grows, expands, spreads, and often at the expense of other beings, right? So this is a, a third level, cause uh, of biological behavior. And he, he talks about the will to power in contrast to the will to survive. So will to power is actually stronger than the will to survive, right? Will, life, seeks to discharge its strength. Actually, survival is just one of the common byproducts of the exercise of the will to power. And then finally, um, I would say the lowest level, right? the will to domination. And you get this idea sort of um, maybe more in works like The Gay Science and on the genealogy of morals. Um, so those are the four levels that I'll outline briefly. And what I would say is Trump provides the vicarious experience of the will to power at those two lowest levels. So he shoots from the hip. He just says stuff. People say uh, he speaks without thinking. And that's why we see these uh, lower two levels that Trump uh, will tend to manifest. Not just jouissance, but a vicarious will to power. Then the question arises, what about the rest of us who don't like Donald Trump, right? What about us? What, what exactly does that mean? Well, ideally, we want to say, well, we already have enough will to power on our own, right? We're already all set. We don't need to experience that vicarious will to power or domination, right? That's what we'd like to think. There are other possible interpretations. You get this sort of smug uh, satisfaction from your sense of moral superiority or what Nietzsche himself calls ressentment just resentment, um, but it's sort of the, the petty bitterness of the conquered. You might say, well, it's what's on more. That's the problem with the people who don't like Trump. Ideally, it's the former. Um, in any case, certain possibilities. Another question. Maybe, one might say, it really is just jouissance, right? After all, Trump is an entertainer. He's entertaining. It doesn't matter how much you hate Donald Trump. You have to admit he's kind of entertaining. He's like, uh, an NBC star, people watch the debates and so on. So if it's really just entertainment, laughter that he provides, maybe it's jouissance after all, maybe it's not the will to power, but in fact, right, we can conceive of it still as the will to power if we take it another step back. Um, and what I mean here is um, with the, the English uh, political philosopher Thomas Hobbes, he had this idea um, with respect to humor that uh, it's basically just sort of an exercise in uh, power, that you always um, make people laugh at the expense of someone else. Now you might ask as well, what about the case of uh, self-deprecating humor? Um, and I think the answer to that is, is pretty clear. I'll, I'll discuss that at some other point. Uh, all right, thanks.